Well, here we are today with uh, Mike Hamer, and uh, Mike is going to basically take us through some of the things that uh, model railroaders go through when they arrive at a model railroad that they haven't operated before, and also provide us with some uh, good insight as to some of the things we should be doing in order to uh, work with others uh, during an operating session and to make it uh, fun and interesting and be able to deal with the some of the issues when that are I, uh, come to a layout that I've never been to before. The first thing I ask the layout owner is, uh, where are the water towers on the layout? And I think that's very important. Chris, where are the water towers on uh, the, the Lion Valley Northern? Well, they're kind of hidden. If you see, there's a little space there right in front of you. They're yeah. there, there. You open that ah. door and check out inside and see what you can find there. Oh, lovely. There you are. What do you got? Oh, good Canadian water towers. Okay. This is the most important thing you look for when you visit a model railroad. <laughs> Here you go, Chris. Oh, thanks a lot, bud. <laughs> oh, in all seriousness, the first thing I want to check out is the overall schematic of the layout. And oftentimes, layout owners actually have their schematic on a sheet of paper. And if they don't, I'll just uh, stand back and peruse the layout. What I'm looking for initially are the, lar the yards. I want to see where the main lines go, if it's a single main line railroad or a double main line. I want to see where any industrial areas are. I want to check out the yard throats just to be sure I know which classification uh, track I want to reach. And uh, I also want to know which direction I'm going, which direction is north or which is south, which direction is inbound or outbound which direction is west or east, depending on how the layout owner has set that up in the geography of their layout. I guess to a large, a large extent by doing that sort of thing, what it does is it takes some of the mystery out of it and some of the tension you might have in terms of not knowing where you're going when you're actually given a train. Yeah, it certainly does, Chris. And uh, I also want to know the names of the towns, like mm -hmm. if there's a major uh, town or a couple of junctions, I want to see where other traffic comes in off other railroad lines as well. I guess that's uh, really key when you're uh, given an, uh, your train orders or you know you may be in a circumstance where you've got some um, car cards and things like that and they've got destination names and all that kind of stuff on them. That's right when I leave a yard I may want to I may choose to block my train so yeah. I want to make sure I have my traffic blocked for each section but sometimes I'll take over a train that hasn't been blocked and I have to deal with that accordingly as well mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll uh, see how that works out on the real railroad when we start operating so here we are at uh, one end of the big classification yard on this layout and uh, Mike's gonna give us a little bit of information here Mike what are you looking for when you see a big yard like this when you're uh, thinking of getting ready to operate a new railroad? Well Chris I want to look at the yard throughout specifically as the main lines are coming in I want to see where the arrival departure tracks are so I see we've got two main lines coming in here and I see we break off we have our arrival departure tracks Where both is that exactly? Uh, right over here. We've come in off the main, take yeah. the switch in here, and we've got this cut of uh, cars here on the arrival departure tracks. Right. We also have three classification tracks. Right now there's a train ready to go out. It's been classified. It's been blocked. And I want to check out the, uh, the tracks to see what's available as far as space at the time when I bring a train in. And we have a yard lead over here heading into this yard over here, Richmond Yard. So I want to understand the yard lead. I want to check out the length of the lead as I'll be using that lead to switch out. I don't want to have to go out onto the main line when I'm switching in the classification tracks. So Mike, here we are. We're at the uh, other end of the uh, classification yard in Edmonton. It's uh, quite a complex area, I see. It what do you see is. here? Well, Chris, the first thing I look at again is the yard throat. I want to see where uh, the trains are coming off the main. And I notice that we have a, a siding here. And if I throw that, my train's going to go up. It can either go into some of the classification tracks. Or if I throw this turn out here, I'm now heading in to a large industrial switching area. So if I'm switching this area, I do need to use part of the main, the inside main here, as my lead to switch. So if I do that, I'll contact dispatch and uh, we'll have these crossovers turn so that uh, a train coming on that inside main out of Edmonton Yard will bypass me and we won't have a collision. Very important. I also see that we've got uh, in this area, it's quite a busy area to lay out, it's quite a joy I presume to operate. You've got the main line tracks coming in, 
We also have a container yard just below you there, Chris, and uh, it looks like it's a rather busy terminal on the railroad. And uh, to access that, you, you're accessing it off a of main line way over here. Here's your lead into that facility off the outer main. And I also notice our uh, engine servicing facility where you house a lot of locomotives is in this general area as well. Quite a busy area the layout, but very realistic, very prototypical. I guess when you're operating here, you're definitely going to have to watch for other trains. You will. Uh, there will be trains coming at Elsbeth Tower. Uh, trains will be holding, and you have to await your instructions. Um, what are you looking for when you arrive at a new, new town like this and you want to familiarize yourself with it? Well, the first key element is I want to go right to the throat of the yard, and if you look down at the, the switches where the double main comes in, you'll see that uh, there's a, a standard switch, but there's a three-way as well. And even experienced operators sometimes find three-way switches tricky, but if you're a newcomer to the operations scheme of things, you'll really want to try them out and test them to see which alignment will take you in, onto which track. Okay, so what do you see here in this yard? I see we've got the double main line going pretty much down the center of the Where yard. Where else is that? Can you the point double that main out? is right here. Okay. Coming down here. I followed the flow of the traffic. So most of the time you want to keep the main lines clear, but at some times you may have to classify a train using the main. So if I'm classifying a train, I want to make sure I've routed other trains around me. Yeah. I also see there's a, a nice uh, line of classification tracks to the inside of the main and there's a couple of tracks to the outside of the main and we yeah. have a number of industries that share the same siding yeah. so that'll make it uh, interesting for switching but also challenging and that's where the joy of model routing comes in. Now all those cars on the one track there that, that's an interchange track what is an interchange? Well an interchange is where traffic has come from a variety of trains and uh, they'll interchange them these cars were dropped by one train they may be picked up by another, or they may be shunted in some of the One of the things I see that there's a train that's parked over by the station there. It seems to be idling in front of a, a tower. Why would a train stop there specifically? Well, I see there's uh, a crew area where uh, the crews can overnight, where crew changes would take place here, and uh, you'd get your orders in the tower as well. So basically, if your train was stopped there, before you would proceed out onto the main, you would be talking to the dispatcher or... You would await your orders. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Mike, here we are out on the main line. Looks like we're uh, at some, some sort of a junction here. Can you explain something about uh, the importance of, of a feature like this? Well, Chris, a key element, I see that you've got a double main line here on your layout, and a key element are the crossovers, and you'll have two or three locations where you'll be able to cross over. This offers great flexibility for the operators and, and also the dispatchers, as you want to keep trains going and flowing. You want to keep the traffic on the move. So at times, I'll want to take the crossover from the inside main here over to the outside main if I want to deal with uh, shunting the traffic into this large mining complex. And likewise, I'll throw those back to the main. Likewise, if I'm on the outside main here, I might want to come into the inside main, and that would allow me to do some switching over here in Shelby. Uh, as well, I can reroute traffic. If I'm the dispatcher, I can reroute traffic here to have meets and passes as well, a very important element if you want to keep the traffic on the move.